Hi guys! Hey, hey, hey everyone! Welcome to another MSI Insider Livestream. And, uh, well, same duo as last week. Yep, but then, you know, <laughs> we kind of switched around, huh? The best, the best <laughs> duo, week, right? There, you were here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Today, uh, I'm on this side. And that usually means that we have slightly different topic when we're jazz than when jazz on this side. Yeah, I see a lot more loose components. Exactly. <laughs> All my stuff are already in one piece. And, and what's different about them compared to the components that you're used to from MSI? Hmm. I'm not sure. It has something to do with the color, I suppose. Yeah, you may be right. <laughs> The components may be familiar to you because all of the components that I have in front of me right now are already available in black. Um, we got many requests from you guys that you want to see more white components. Um, so here they are, our first white uh, separate components in our lineup. We have a liquid cooler, a power supply and a case that we're going to talk about today. Uh, and of course we will also have a very nice giveaway, so make sure to participate. If you go to msi.com slash 2 slash insider or if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, you can also follow the direct link uh, to Gleam that our bot drops in the chat once every five minutes. Um, there you can perform certain actions. The more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. And throughout the stream, we'll give away several um, game codes for Rainbow Six Extraction. Um, later on, I will also build a nice PC with these new white components. And if it works, I hope it does, and then we will also play some uh, Rainbow Six Together with Ja, we will play uh, some co-op. But yeah, before we do that, of course, um, we need to build stuff first. But first, let's take a bit of a look at, at the new white components that we have here today. I see Rio is already quite familiar with uh, our stuff. That's a, uh, indeed a core liquid on the table, huh? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um, who is that judge's younger brother? I mean, it could be from another mother. <laughs> <coughs> All right, guys. Yeah, if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the chat. And um, if you're watching on Facebook or uh, Periscope, you know, make sure to go to our Twitch or YouTube channel because there we're actually monitoring your Periscope. Uh, is that chat. even still a thing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what do we have on the table, Michiel? Can you go to the PPT? Then I'll Let's show go. you a quick overview. <laughs> so. The products that we'll talk about today are a case, a liquid cooler, and a power supply. And you may already recognize them because, as I mentioned, all of them are already available in black. So our case is our MPG Gungnir 110R with a simple addition of white. Um, then we have our MPG A750GF white power supply and our MAG Core Liquid uh, 240R V2 also in white. Um, let's start with the case. As you can see, it has more than one tempered glass panel. So let me quickly show you. Jack, can you go to the close-up? Yep. I think for many cases you're used to having a tempered glass side panel nowadays, but in this model we also have tempered glass on this side of the front panel. Um, it's not completely choked because as you can see right here, there are some air intakes and also on the sides to help with airflow. Um, so even though there is a lot of tempered glass, it can still properly breathe. And when we take a look at the airflow design of this case, you will see that it enters from the front, it will go out of the back and out of the top. Um, by default, um, there, there are no fans installed at the top, but today in our build, for example, we will use our core liquid fans also to help, help with the airflow um, in the top of the case. Uh, I'm Marilena is asking, are the four fans included? Yes, they are. So by default, you have three fans in the front and one in the back, and all of them also do addressable RGB. 120 millimeter fans, by the way. So within this case, you can fit either an ATX motherboard, a micro ATX motherboard, or a mini ITX motherboard. Um, in today's system, we will use the MPG Z690 Force motherboard, so that's a full ATX motherboard. So we're going to use uh, all the space that this case has to offer. Um, you can also fit CPU coolers up to a height of 170 millimeter, and you can fit graphics cards up to a length of 340 millimeter. And the card that we're using today is almost that. You will see later on that. It fits, but just barely, because we're using one of our <laughs> yeah, it's a very X beefy cards. boy. Yeah, it's a, it's a very big graphics card, but it fits. And if it fits, it sits. 
And the PSU length up to 250 millimeter if you um, remove the three and a half inch uh, hard drive base, uh, slightly shorter if you have them installed, um, but no issues whatsoever with the power supply that we're going to use today. We can just keep the um, hard drive trays in there. In terms of fans, um, in the front, it already comes with three 120 millimeter fans. Um, you can also choose, for example, to go for two times 140 in the front. In the top, you can fit either um, two times 140 millimeter fans or two times 120 millimeter fans. So in the top, there are no fans by default. Um, so you can add them yourself or, for example, install the radiator for your liquid cooling there, because they, those also come with fans um, that you can use for outtake, for example. Um, the back already comes with uh, a single 120 millimeter fan. Um, that's also the only type of fan that will fit in the back. So you cannot fit a 140 in the back, to, just to keep that in mind. In terms of radiator support, in the front you can, for example, fit up to 360 millimeter uh, radiators. Um, in the top you can fit up to 240 millimeters, and in the back up to 120. Then our front I.O. panel. Let me quickly just show you up front. I think that's the easiest. Make a little bit of space. Oh, that's bright, isn't it? <laughs> Oof. Usually we're dealing with black products. This is more difficult. <laughs> so here we have the power button. Then we have our reset button. Um, power LED. USB Type-C port. Then we have two USB Type-A ports. Audio jacks. So for um, the headset and the microphone, of course, headphones, microphones, and we have um, the LED button right here. So maybe a little bit hard to see. So I will go back to my overview. I think that's a little bit more clear. So the USB ports, the two type A ports are USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1 uh, type A, so five gigabits per second. Um, the front USB type C is actually a lightning USB 20G. Um, uh, USB. Um, of course your motherboard has to support this as well so if you want to take advantage of that um, super speed USB 20G so 20 gigabits per second you have to make sure that you also use a motherboard that has the correct front header um, for for this type of connection. In terms of uh, like if you if you look at the physical connector you cannot see a difference between the different uh, type C connectors um, so best to check uh, for your specific motherboard, what kind of speed it offers. Because some offer 5 gigabits per second, some offer 10, and some offer even 20. But the case can support up to 20, and also the MPG Z694's motherboard that we're using today can also support the 20 gigabits per second on um, the front USB type C connector. Then the Insta Light Loop button, that's the dedicated button that you can use to switch through different presets that you have for the LED uh, lighting in the case, so to switch all the fans, um, but also other stuff that you can connect to the um, addressable RGB hub in this case. Uh, you can all control it through that button. Um, but another option you have with this is that if you hold the button, then you can also sync it up with, uh, for example, an MSI motherboard, because this is also fully compatible with Mystic Light. Um, so that way, if you connect it to your motherboard and sync it by holding the, uh, the LED button on the front of the case, um, you can sync everything up and get all those cool effects that you can all set up in um, Mystic Light within the MSI Center software. Uh, I see a question, does it come in pink? Not yet, but if we get enough requests, then who knows? Because um, in, in the past we only had it in black, and. Uh, plenty of people ask for white, so now we have a white version. So if we get enough requests for pink, you never know. Uh, Troy is asking, where is Ja? I can only see his twin in the stream. <laughs> Does he look that different today? Last week I, had a ha I was wearing a cap, so I was looking like this. Ah, so yeah, that was <coughs> your... It's a little the, bit the, different. The detective look, right? Yep, my Spanish... Uh, <laughs> Spanish. Spanish I don't know why it was Spanish, but... <laughs> Me neither. To me, it looked a bit like Sherlock Holmes. Um, Nate Squid is asking, I was never contacted for the last week's giveaway. Any updates? Ja, did you send out the game codes for last week? Indeed, I did. So all the winners... Check your I spam box. we had four winners. Yeah. Uh, they were all contacted. So mm -hmm. make sure to, to check your spam box if you, if you didn't see it there. Um, and I'm sure Ja is kind enough to also double check it for you after the stream to see if it was sent to the right address or something. 
Um, wait, wait, wait. Who was asking? Uh, Naked Squid 24. Naked Squid 24. I have to say that within the four uh, winners that we had, there was actually one email address that wasn't correct. So uh, it couldn't get delivered. Uh, so let me just quickly look up the nickname, which was... Um, so yeah, if that's you, then uh, <laughs> perhaps we need to find a way to see what your correct uh, email address is. It happens make sometimes. sure to sign up this week with the correct one. And make sure that because you're now responding with your Twitch account, so we can search for your Twitch account and then we should have your contact information. Yeah, indeed, Naked Squid. Uh, yes, you want. Uh, I see that uh, it was your uh, email address which was incorrect, so I could not get the code delivered to you. So make sure to use the correct email address <coughs> yeah. when you sign up today. Then we I will, will send it, up it to the in the in the uh, in the overview, and then I'll find your email address. So just really make sure it's correct this time. All right. Okay. Let's continue. On top of this case, let me switch this around. We also have a nice dust filter. So this is magnetic, so you can easily take it off. And that way you don't gather a lot of dust right there. Because no one likes a dusty PC, and especially not a white PC. Quickly summarizing the case. So you see the cool exploded view. I always like these kind of images. So you can properly see what's in there. So you can see the four fans that come in there by default. All the fans are, of course, also in white. Um, but they can light up in every color because they're addressable um, RGB supported. You get front USB uh, 20G, um, tempered glass on both the side panel and the front panel. Um, and of course the nice dust filters on the top but also in the front, in front of the fans. Then let's continue to our power supply. And before we do that, I'm going to make some space. Get this big guy out of the way. Because here we have our MPG A750GF white. As you can see, it's a fully modular power supply, so you can take out all the cables if you want. Um, of course, it won't function without cables, but you only have to plug in the cables that you need, so that will make uh, cable management a lot easier. Um, you get quite extensive uh, GPU support on this power supply. Um, so no matter if you're using an AMD card, an NVIDIA card, um, they're all perfectly supported. Um, please note that this model does not come, for example, with uh, the new PCI Express Gen 5 connector yet. Um, so for that you will still need an adapter. Um, but it does offer six um, PCI Express 6 uh, plus 2 pin power connectors. And something you have to keep in mind when connecting them is that it is a multi-rail power supply. So Jack, can you quickly go to the PPT? <laughs> we have someone in the chat saying GF as in girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Probably it, not. Th then it should have been pink, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, never thought, thought of that, actually. Um, so yeah, uh, the way you connect is quite important for this. Um, because um, it's a multi-rail power supply. And what you want to avoid is to get... Um, your graphics card fully connected on a single rail. So especially if you're using like a very high-end graphics card, like for example some of the 3090 models, um, they sometimes come with uh, three 8-pin power connectors and they consume so much power that you don't want to have that load all on, on one of the, the rails in the power supply. So you want to spread that load between multiple rails. So if we take a look at the back of the power supply, you can see that you get um, different connectors here and they say for example VGA1, VGA1 and VGA2. So if you're using two cables for example you want to connect them to VGA1 and, uh, and VGA2. So that way you're using different reels. If you connect the two cables to both the VGA1 connectors they will all be on the same reel. So that way you can spread um, a single graphics card over multiple reels on your power supply to spread the load on those reels. This power supply is also 80 plus gold certified and personally I think that's a bit of the, the sweet spot where you want to be in terms of still being relatively affordable um, but yet being very efficient. Um, so it's very high quality power supply. Um, so especially with the, 
I don't know if it's everywhere around the, around the world, but here in Europe, electricity prices are going through the roof. Not only electricity, but also gas. Um, so if you want to keep in mind to keep your electricity bill a little bit lower, make sure to get a bit more efficient power supply. Um, and I think 80 plus gold is, is a nice uh, place to be in terms of also what the power supply costs. Of course, you have higher ones, but they will get exponentially more expensive. Um, so yeah, then it's always, is it worth it or not? That very much depends on your how much you use it and what you pay for energy in your region. This power supply is also equipped with 100% uh, Japanese capacitors. Uh, so very high quality capacitors, uh, the best in the market. Um, this also allows us to give a very long warranty on this power supply. So depending on the region, but in most regions, um, it comes with 10 years of warranty. So in terms of dur durability, there should be no issues at all. Let me see if we've got some questions. Um, power supply is built on addressable RGB. Now this, uh, the power supply itself does not have addressable RGB. Um, Freud says with four months electricity bill, you could get an AIO. I think with a single month, I could get an AIO <laughs> at this point. Um, when you have a motherboard that can get three CPU cables, do you have to plug in all three? I think you mean like the eight pin uh, EPS uh, power connectors on the motherboard. No, you don't have to plug in all of them. Um, you can even run it with a single eight pin power connector if you want to. Uh, but especially if you're running a higher end processor and if you're overclocking, um, you can do load balancing um, by plugging in multiple. Um, so you don't have to, but you have the option to, and that very much depends on your usage, whether or not it's useful. Um, Repo Man says the 80 series GPUs, I haven't heard of 80 series GPUs yet, will come with five eight pin power connectors. Well, this power supply offers six in total, so it should be fine. Um, okay, Naked Squid changed the email address on Gleam. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully now it works. Okay, let's continue. So as I mentioned, it's fully modular, um, so you will get a nice bag of cables included. By the way, we're still using early samples, so I'm not 100% sure if the bag that comes with the power supply will be in white or is in black like the, the usual uh, AGF models. So I, I actually don't know certain, um, but we've got some white cables in there as well. Um, and based on what you need for your build, um, you just plug them in the back of your power supply. So you will always need, for example, the cables for your motherboard, at least one for your CPU. Um, but depending on whether you use, for example, a more entry level or an extremely high end graphics card, you can decide to only plug in one or two um, VGA cables, for example. Um, but also if you're only using an M.2 SSD and don't have any other SATA devices, then it doesn't make sense to plug in that cable. Um, so yeah, it uh, makes your life quite a bit easier when doing cable management in your case. Um, also just looks a lot cleaner, can even help a bit with airflow. Um, so yeah, I think fully modular power supplies, definitely a useful feature to have. Guys, Emil says, I only use M.2 SSD. Uh, yeah, I see more and more people are doing that nowadays. M me personally as well, I use two M.2 SSDs, that's it. Um, so I, for example, don't have any SATA uh, devices anymore, so I don't plug in those cables. Um, then the size of this power supply, because even though it's an ATX power supply, it is not very big. So especially in length, um, some power supplies can be quite a lot longer. Um, and in certain cases that can give issues. Uh, for example, in the, the Gangneer 110R that we're using today, you can, for example, remove uh, the hard drive base to give you some more space for your power supply. Um, but because this one is quite compact, you don't need to do that. So you can properly use um, this power supply while also having the three and a half inch um, hard drive base installed in the case. Um, Chlorin22 is asking, sorry for asking, but when is the MSI um, and E project? I, I think you mean the Evangelion project coming out relatively soon. So uh, we will actually do a, a dedicated live stream about this when the time is there. So stay tuned for that. Um, Zach Russian is asking, guys, uh, for MSI stream on Facebook, why do you ignore the chat there? We actually cannot see that one. 
we can read the chat for YouTube and Twitch. Um, but for Facebook, we're streaming to a lot of different countries. So there are separate Facebook pages. So unfortunately, we cannot see um, the chat for all those separate um, Facebook pages because we're cross-posting it to different pages. So if you want to be involved in the chat, make sure to use Twitch or YouTube. Uh, Billy is asking, is the NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030 DDR5 a good graphics card? It depends on what you want to do with it. It's not a very fast graphics card. So for gaming, it can run the lighter games, uh, like most esports titles. If you don't crank everything up in terms of um, resolution and details, then you should be okay. Um, but it's not a graphics card specifically meant for gaming. If you, for example, only need display outputs and that's it, and you don't really do anything that is very demanding for a graphics card, then of course a 1030 is perfectly fine. Um, but in most situations, you may be able to, to do with um, just integrated graphics on your processor, um, if it has integrated graphics, of course, because not all CPUs have that. Jay Orito is pretty serious about the prospect. <laughs> oh, the prospect 700 really. Uh, we'll also cover that one later. Um, that one's slightly further away, um, uh, but yeah, we will definitely cover that, that case as well. I cannot give you an exact date yet, unfortunately. Okay, then let's take a look at all the connectors um, that this power supply offers. So you get a single 24-pin ATX connector, so the one you connect to your motherboard, of course. Um, then you get six PCI Express connectors, and all of them are 8 plus 2-pin connectors. Um, then you get eight SATA connectors, you get two EPS connectors, and both are uh, four plus four pin. So for example, if you have, uh, like the motherboard we're using today, has two eight pin uh, EPS on the motherboard, so we will use both of them. Um, then you get four Molex connectors and um, one connector, um, if you still use it for a floppy drive. Um, I don't think many people still use that, but some people, for example, still use fan controllers that still use this connector. Um, but yeah, um, then let's take a look at our uh, MAG Core Liquid 240R V2. So I'm going to make some space again. There we go. As you can see, quite a lot of cables. That of course has to do with the, the fans and the RGB here as well, because there's RGB in the water block as well. Um, this is the 240 millimeter uh, model. So it comes with two fans, evaporation proof tubing. Um, and let's take a look at how the, the radiator for this one works. I'm going to turn this around. Jack, can you maybe quickly show the slide? Here you can see how the, um, uh, the, the liquid flows through the radiator of this uh, liquid cooler. So as you can see, the, the hot liquid that comes from the CPU actually goes through the outer sides of the radiator. Then in the end, it comes together in the middle and the, um, the liquid that was cooled down goes from the middle back to the top. So the reason why we did that is actually because of the fans. So they're now in, on the other side, but of course, um, when you have a fan, you have basically have a dead, so a dead spot in the middle. So where you have the motor of the fan, you will not have any airflow. The airflow always comes from the outside. So basically where you have the airflow will be right here. So when you have the hot uh, liquid on the outside, you will catch much more airflow then you will get in the middle. So that way you can more effectively cool down uh, the liquid inside the radiator. Um, that's also the reason why, for example, the pump, we will talk more about that later, is positioned exactly behind one of those dead zones of the fan. Another cool feature that this liquid cooler offers um, is the rotatable block head. Um, and this basically allows you, um, however you position it in your case, you can always get the dragon in the right direction. So I want to show you up close. Um, so you can just turn this around. So for example, if you want to have um, the tubes on this side, you can just have it like this. If you want to have them on the bottom, you just turn it like that and your dragon is always in the right direction. So you can turn this up to 270 degrees so that way you can get um, every direction possible. Then what sometimes surprises people a bit is that the pump um, for this model is actually in the radiator. So that one you will see right there. Um, for some liquid coolers, it's uh, like for example our MPG and MEG series, it's uh, located in uh, the CPU block. For these models, it's inside the radiator. 
Um, and because it is positioned exactly behind one of those dead zones of the fan, so where the motor is located, you're not obstructing any airflow. Um, it has its benefits, it has its downsides, um, so that's why we have different um, uh, solutions for different models. Um, but in general, uh, yeah, it, it can make a bit of a difference in how you want to position stuff inside your case. Um, but by having it here, it can give you a little bit of benefit with, with noise production, depending on also where your case is located. Also because this is one of the, our newer V2 models, it comes with LGA 1700 uh, support out of the box. So today we will also be using a Z690 motherboard, um, which is an LGA 700 motherboard. So we're using a disc bracket and that will always be included with all our V2 models actually. So also if you get the black one, uh, the V2 models already include the LGA 1700 bracket. Um, the non-V2 come up to LGA 1200 for Intel. Uh, Papa <coughs> Nahi is asking on YouTube, how do we redeem games? Well, um, if you are one of the winners, uh, you will get an email from us uh, where we also explain how to redeem the redeem process for Ubisoft, you know, for Steam or for Origin, uh, you name it. So um, it's always uh, explained in, a, in an email that we send out to you guys if you're the winner. Uh, see, Area Studio Pro PC Game is asking, uh, fix the pump on the uh, Core Liquid 240-360R. Uh, three client PCs have the, the same broken all-in-one liquid cooling problem. Um, we actually also sent out a press release for this because we know we indeed have a certain issue with our uh, V1 models. Um, so best to check your serial number there, then you can know if your, your um, liquid cooler is affected or not. And that way, um, if it is affected by this issue, um, you can swap it for another one, for a V2 model. Um, so yes, we are aware of, of uh, an issue with certain batches of the, the V1 model. Um, so if you're experiencing issues, please check your serial number and see if your model is affected. Okay, let's continue by building this PC. Um, I'm going to put my notebook to the side because I need a little bit more space. <laughs> That's good. And then the table is going to be transformed into a playground. So guys, <laughs> <laughs> pay close attention. Oh, I need the receiver for that mouse for my system later. So how many of you guys out there watching right now actually have, you know, PC building experience? If you don't have much, then you know right now is a good time to pay close to attention. Learn. And if you have <laughs> questions, make sure to ask in the chat. You know, maybe some tips regarding how to do the pasting, or you know, uh, what kind of components will fit on what kind of platforms. Make sure to tune in, ask questions. Let me quickly introduce you to all the components that we're using today. So I got a lot of stuff right next to me, hidden in front of Ja. <laughs> oh really? It's right behind me. Look, there is a graphics card hidden right here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so as I mentioned before, today we're using our MPG Z690 Force motherboard. And I think you can guess why we're using this one. Um, it's not exactly white, but it's a very bright silver and it matches very nicely um, with these white components. Um, we also have some uh, matching DDR5 memory for this. Uh, so we got these from our friends from G-Skill and they're Trident Z5 uh, RGB, RGB modules, uh, DDR5 uh, 5600. Uh, uh, it's 32 gigabytes in total, I believe. So it should be good. Uh, then, Mikhail, by the way, yes. uh, <coughs> is the uh, case already online on our website? Yeah, you should be able to find it. If you search okay. for um, MPG Gungnir 110R White, um, then you should be able to find it already. Oh, there you have it. And then we have a very nice CPU. This is the Intel Core i9 12900K. Um, so the top model in the Intel lineup. Usually, um, if you're a returning visitor here, you know that with this CPU, I usually recommend a bigger liquid cooler. Uh, so today we're using a 240 millimeter liquid cooler. In general, I would suggest it's perfectly fine for Core i5, Core i7 um, uh, from the last generation. For the Core i9, if you have the possibility, go for 
uh, for example a 280 or 360. Unfortunately we don't have them in white yet. Um, but the reason I'm still using a Core i9 today uh, in this live stream is actually very simple because I didn't have another CPU available for this build. Um, that is also LGA 1700. But in general for a 240 um, liquid cooler I would personally stick with uh, up, to an, uh, uh, up to a Core i7 from the last generation. Um, but today we're only going to game on it, so it should be fine. But if you're okay. doing like extremely heavy tasks where you put 100% CPU load, like video rendering, stuff like that, um, then you can heat these up quite a bit. Uh, see, Pakla uh, is asking on Twitch, do you still need anti-static straps these days? Can static still damage your components? Well, that is actually pretty old school. <laughs> I, I personally don't. Uh, we also test our uh, products for ESD, so ESD protection is usually quite good nowadays. Um, I have never damaged any components um, by uh, electrostatic discharge. Um, Me neither. Yeah, I think I don't think it's that much of an issue. I, I don't use, of course, don't, for example, uh, build your PC on like a uh, um, uh, or like like a cotton blanket or anything that can be very static. So don't search for it specifically. Um, but yeah, I don't think a band should matter that much personally. I haven't experienced any issues, but please let me know in chat if you ever had any issues because of that. Um, then let's continue with our next part. We have our um, Spatium M480 SSD. This is the uh, two terabyte model. So this is a PCI Express Gen 4 SSD, very fast. And we have a very big and heavy graphics card. Yeah, I noticed on uh, how you pronounce the <laughs> way <laughs> <laughs> we were picking it up. Exactly, this is our GeForce RDX 3070 Ti Supreme X graphics card. This is a big boy, but it does fit in the case. Barely, but it does fit. <laughs> so even like top-end graphics cards uh, can still fit quite comfortably in uh, the Gunner 110R. So yeah, that's it for, for today's components. Um, so let me make some space and let's start building. Well, when uh, Mikhail is, uh, you know, making space, perhaps we can already draw today's first winner Ooh. for extraction. That is a good idea. So if you just joined, uh, please go to msite.com slash two slash insider. There you can, uh, you know, perform as many actions as you want. The more you do, the better your chance will be at winning one of today's. Rainbow Six Extraction Game Codes. But if you're already registered, of course, per usual, you're still in the drawing pool, so don't worry. You, uh, you still have a chance of winning in today's live stream, since we have quite a few to give away. It seems like my uh, drawing system is uh, glitching a little bit. Uh, there we go. Sometimes it takes the a while to load. one is going to be drawn in three, two, one. Uh, uh, well, we have our first winner. Yeah, Ooh, you want to do the honor? <laughs> Wapa calls. Congratulations. I'm sorry for mispronouncing your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh it's uh, yeah W A P A K E L S. So Wapakos, congratulations, Wapakos. you are our first goat. For Quite Rainbow few, Six uh, Extraction. Yeah. All right, to the rest of you guys, uh, you know, good luck out there. Still more to come. So um, before we start building in the case, I would always recommend to basically prepare your motherboard. So you have some stuff that you need to install on your motherboard, your CPU, your RAM, your SSD, and it's a lot easier to install all the stuff on your motherboard when it's still outside of your case. Um, so let's start with the CPU. As you can see, it also comes with a nice cover on the socket, of course, to protect the small pins in there. So you just open it up, keep the cap on there. Um, then you grab your CPU, put it in the socket. Always be very careful with this. Okay, Michael, can you show uh, the chat how you put a CPU in there? Because there was actually some people asking yep. where, if we can show this up close. And guys, you also need to remember that this is an Intel platform, right? So if you have an yeah, AMD setup, AMD, this is the different. socket is going to look different. Let me see, because 
I need my hands to do this, so let me see how I can get this as, cl as close to you as possible. So basically, let me take this out again. When you get a motherboard, you will get it like this. So you get a cap on there and of course the socket is closed. Um, when you want to install it, you just open up the socket like this. Then you lift that part up and now you see the socket is open. So you see all the little pins here and those are quite fragile. So make sure not to touch them. Grab your CPU, make sure you have it in the right direction and you can actually see that in this, maybe it's hard to see here, but you have some small cutouts in the CPU and um, you have to drop them in the correct way in the socket. Always be very careful so you don't damage any pins and you sh slowly drop it in here. So now the CPU is inside the socket. So I cannot, re I cannot move it right now. Um, when your CPU is there, then of course you can remove the cover uh, because you cannot damage any pins anymore. So you just pull that off. Then you close this lid and then put it down and it's installed. So that's it. It's actually quite easy. There we go. Um, we're using a liquid cooler, um, but to make our life a bit easier, I'm going to put the mount on re already on the motherboard. So later on, um, when the motherboard is inside the case, um, we only have to put in the, the radiator and put on the block, but we don't have to put on the mount for the block still. Um, so let me quickly screw this off. So the core liquid models always come with a backplate. And as the word already says, that goes um, behind your motherboard. There we go. So you see the four holes here that you will also use for a stock cooler, for example. That one matches with the holes for the back plate. So you just put it like this and you drop it down and make sure it's still aligned. And there we go. And then we have these little screws, you screw them on there and then the back plate is fixed in the right position. And there we go. Um, Onger is saying, where would you recommend the radiator with pump to be mounted? I would say the one with the, the pump inside the uh, radiator is not that sensitive to how you position it as you, for example, have with um, the ones that have the, the pump in the block. Because then you usually don't want that to be the highest point because uh, bubbles will always go up. So you will get bubbles inside your pump and then it cannot function properly. But when you have the pump in the radiator, you will have a huge surface area, of course, with the full radiator. So you don't specifically get the, the bubbles all that much in one place as you would have um, when you have the, the pump inside uh, the CPU block. So for, for this one, I would say it's fine to also position it in the top. That's also what we're going to do today. Um, front is fine as well, of course, uh, obviously. Um, but if you have one, uh, if you have a liquid cooler with the pump inside the CPU block, then I would recommend to never um, make that the highest point. So for example, I wouldn't put my radiator in the bottom of a case and then have the block with the pump um, installed um, higher than that. Um, Edwin K asks, which brand of cooling paste do you use? I just have a very generic one right here. It doesn't even mention a brand. Um, <laughs> these coolers also come with um, some cooling paste included on there. Uh, it's perfectly fine cooling paste, by the way. Sometimes people overestimate cooling paste. That doesn't mean you need to get the worst possible, um, but don't expect to win 10 degrees by using a premium cooling paste. Um, so even the, the cheaper ones are usually quite okay. Um, 
Pagla Mia is asking, do you need to clean the chip surface before you put the CPU cooler on it? Yes, if it's dirty, definitely, um, because you want to have proper heat dissipation. And if you still have, for example, old cooling paste or, or any other stuff on there, you want to have that removed because that will not help for um, dissipating the heat from your CPU to your cooler. Um, so yes, definitely um, clean it up if you still have, if you've used it before and, for example, have some old cooling paste on there. Um, you can also use some alcohol for that. There are also special um, um, liquids to, to remove these kind of things from a CPU. So yeah, make, make sure that it's clean uh, if you want to get good cooling performance. Okay, um, then let's continue with our uh, SSD. And our motherboard has M.2 Shield Frother, so that means that we have some cooling for the SSD on the motherboard itself. So if your SSD, for example, comes with a heatsink, um, if you use a motherboard like this, I would suggest to remove the heatsink and install it underneath uh, the M.2 Shield Frother. Um, of course, what you can do if you really want to use um, the heatsink that comes included with the SSD, you can, of course, also keep this removed. Um, the M.2 Shield Frother on this one is actually, on this motherboard is actually dual sided, so you will also get um, a cooling pad underneath um, and also um, a plate of aluminum underneath. And here you also see the cooling pad right here. Um, and the reason why it has dual sided is because an SSD like this one, which is kind of a big SSD, two terabytes, it has chips on both sides of the SSD. So that way it will help to cool both sides. Um, to make sure even if you put it on a very high load, you're not experiencing uh, any thermal throttling. Okay, now let's screw this back on. Well, in this case, uh, there is already pre-applied uh, cooling paste on the header, right? Of the uh, no, no, no. I think this one also comes with a, a small tube included in the box. Okay, so then Michiel will show you in just a second when he indulls, uh, yeah. installs the uh, head as to how, the, uh, you know, how to apply the cooling paste. Yeah, and people are doing this in different ways and one way is not necessarily wrong because some people already spread it over their CPU, some people just drop some cooling paste. I personally just put some cooling paste on there and I use the pressure um, of the, um, the CPU block mount to spread the cooling paste over the CPU. There is an exception to this. Uh, for example, if you use like an AMD Threadripper CPU, they're very big. So then I put dots in multiple positions to make sure it is properly covered. Um, but this CPU is relatively small. Um, so in this situation, I just put one drop in the middle and then I use the pressure to spread um, the cooling paste over the CPU. Uh, Rayo412 is asking DDR5. Yes, that's actually our next part. So the Trident Z5 RGB modules. And always make sure to put them in the right memory slot to get proper um, dual channel on your motherboard. So um, if you're using two, two modules like I'm doing right now, always make sure to put them not in slot zero, but in slot one and not in slot two, but in slot three. So always keep one open, fill one, keep one open, fill one. And that has to do with uh, the memory tracing um, on these motherboards. Let me see. Always make sure to have it in the right direction as well. You can easily see that on the cutout. Um, so right now I'm putting it in the wrong direction. Turn it around and make sure it clicks on both sides. And then it's properly installed. So now we've installed the CPU, um, the SSD and the memory. So the motherboard is basically prepared. Um, then I still have this bracket and this actually goes on the CPU block. So I'm going to, um, later on I will position the block like, let me see, like that. So I will shove it on on the side like this. That's quite easy, you just put it on the side, put some pressure and then you hear a click and it's properly attached. Uh, I'm a says you make it look so easy, my brother almost broke my $150 RAM sticks. 
yeah, always just be careful, properly look where um, the cutout is, that way you cannot go wrong. But if, if it doesn't go in properly, then you're probably not putting it in, in the right direction. So don't keep on pushing um, if it goes really difficult, because then you may break stuff. Um, do you know by heart which memory channel uh, is in which slot? Yeah, you have a dual channel um, on these motherboards. Um, so basically uh, slot 0 and 2 are one channel and slot 1 and 3 are another channel. So it's never the ones next to each other, so you always have one in between. And if you're only using two sticks, always use the outer ones, and that has to do with the memory tracing. So you will get a better uh, signal quality when you use the outer ones. So skip a slot, then install a module, skip a slot, then install a module. Of course, if you're using four modules, just fill everything up. That's it. Okay, I'm going to put this aside, and then let's prepare our power supply. Um, because once this is installed in the case, it's very difficult uh, to install cables in there. So first, let me grab all the cables that we need today. Do I have everything? Oh, no, I need this one as well. There we go. I don't need these, so just toss them aside. So what I will use, the 24-pin ATX power connector that I of course need for the motherboard. Then I have two of uh, these. Let me see. These are two 8-pin power connectors for a CPU that I will also plug into the motherboard of course. And then um, today I'm using a 3070 Ti uh, power supply. Um, it has two power connectors um, and there is also a cable that has two power connectors already. Um, but because I'm using a multi-rail power supply, I want to use both rails on that power supply that I have available for the VGA. So that's why I'm using um, two separate cables. And I will plug one in the VGA1 and one in the VGA2. And that one, I will have them on different um, rails on the GPU for some uh, load balancing. Um, then I also have um, a SATA power connector and this one I need to power um, the ARGB hub in the back of the case. So those are all the cables that I need, so I'm not going to put in anything else. So let me quickly install this. This is all very straightforward how it's labeled, so it shouldn't be that much of a challenge to, to plug the right cables in. So pretty much anyone can do this without having a uh, quick guide. Yeah, this, this is very easy. Read labels. Yeah. You will see on the cable what kind of cable you're using. So maybe that's a bit hard to see in the close-up, but for example here on the side it says PCI Express. And if I, for example, have this cable, you see CPU. Um, and you see the same labels on the power supply. That's actually really nice because I remember, you know, back in the days when I was building PCs, uh, in all, all the way back in the AM3 time, uh, the cables, you know, they, they, they were never like indicated. So, you know, you had to figure out which one was for what. Yeah. <laughs> The, um, with these, that's very straightforward, very easy. Uh, the graphics card is indeed a 3070 Ti Supreme X. So I'm going to plug one in the VGA1 and the other one. Let me see if I have. There we go. And the other 6 plus 2 in the VGA2. So both are on a different rail. And then I have our SADA, and that one is, of course, in the SADA. There we go. So that's all I need. Then let's put this aside and grab the case. And let's open this baby up. I always suggest to directly open it up on both sides. It will make your life so much easier to reach places. Oh, 
Rossoth is saying they made it a lot easier modular now than it was 15 years ago. Yes, modular power supplies, especially fully, mo fully modular ones, are very easy to work with. Um, before I start with anything, I'm going to put in the power supply. As you can see, this is an, this is an early sample. This is not a, a, the ones you will find in the store. So here, the cables are not properly managed right now. Uh, usually that's a, not, a lot neater, but this has of course already been used for testing. Um, so some other differences you will see, for example, you can see that my sample doesn't have the rubbers right here. I believe the final one should have those as well. Um, so still an early sample, um, but all for you guys to see what these cases are like. For the power supply, um, here you have ven uh, ventilation, so I'm going to put the fan downwards and I'm just going to shove it in from the side. I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can actually reach it properly. I kept this on on purpose by the way, that's um, to keep this a little bit aside from all the other cables which will make my life a little bit easier later on because I only need one SATA power connector anyway so I don't need to be able to access all of them. There we go. And then, of course, align it with the screw holes on the back of the case. There's the right screwdriver. asking that is tempered glass in the case and in the side panel yes it's indeed tempered glass uh, Swissler is saying are you guys uh, planning to make uh, SFX PSUs um, I cannot talk too far ahead but I think many people in the chat know me well enough that I very much like very small ITX builds. So I'm definitely also pushing for small power supplies to go with them. So um, I put in the effort for sure. If I succeed, we will see in the future. Okay, power supply is installed. Um, let's just connect the SATA directly now that I can easily access it. So I need the SATA one. Um, for the addressable RGB hub that you will see right here. So I will put all the addressable RGB components will be connected to the small PCB right here and that will be powered through this SATA power connector. So let me pull this forward a little bit and then plug it in. There we go because now it's still easy to access it. Then I'm just tossing these to the sides and carefully put down the case. And then it's time to install our motherboard inside the case. Swissler um, is, uh, <laughs> Swissler is uh, worried that it's going to be a hot box, but uh, you know, I, I think in a second when Michiel Yeah, you'll see later on. I will play some games some as well, so it should be fine. Yeah. Swissler says, I'm also a small form factor fan rocking an NR200P. We actually did a, a build with that specific case as well. We got one from our friends from Cooler Master and we did a very nice um, mini ITX Core i9 build. Um, I think it was still with a 10900K and a 2080Ti. That was basically the maximum that we could do at that time because th 30 series and 11 gen weren't out yet. Um, now let's put in the motherboard. So ATX motherboard, so you get nine screws in there. Um, it has a pre-installed I.O. shield, this model, so very straightforward. You just drop it in in the correct position. Um, no need to put in the I.O. shield first. There we go. Let me quickly grab my camera so you can also see from the top. One second. Can you connect to my camera, Joe? We have to reconnect just a second. All 
Am I on the right network? I hope uh, so. It switched me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, connect again. Let's try again. There All we are. Right, we have a signal. So this is what it looks like from the top. So now I will screw it in in all nine holes. One, two, three, four, five, five right there. Six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to put you guys down again. So I got my hands free. And grab the right screws. <clears throat> Anu Deep is saying, to be honest, I don't know anything about building a PC, but I want to learn. Well, you're in, you're in a good place right now. Yeah. It's, it's not that hard, I would say. Do you think, Ja? <clears throat> I think that the building part is the, is the easy part. It's the knowing what goes in is the harder part. You know, you got to know, you know, what kind of uh, CPU will fit on what kind of platform. You got to know what kind of motherboard you're going to go for. You know, you got to watch yeah, out that you that's have enough important. power that's coming out of your power supply and compatibility with your DDR. But I think once you have done a little bit of a homework, I'll say, you know, watch a few videos here and there, then it's going to be quite, you're going to find yourself to be, you know, on a quite easy path. And then but after a few trial and errors, so you are pretty much building your, uh, your first PC. By the way, I always use a screwdriver with a magnetic head oh, because that will make your life so, so much, much easier <laughs> to reach certain places. Especially right now, I'm screwing in the screw next to the, the two 8-pin connectors. That's like a bit hidden in a corner. So a uh, magnetic head will make your life a lot easier with your screwdriver. Swissler says lots of tutorials on YouTube. Yeah, definitely. And this is a quite quite a straightforward build because it's a, a quite a regular ATX case with small form factor uh, stuff will become more difficult of course you have less space to work with more difficult to reach certain places so if it's your first PC build maybe don't go for like the very smallest mini ITX case that you can find because those are harder to build Guys, Emil says, I'm planning on buying the MPG Velux 100P because of the airflow. Yeah, in terms of airflow, very nice case. <clears throat> Man, nowadays, you know, uh, it, it's so popular to have like a small form factor build. I remember like uh, 10 years ago, and I, it was like so popular for everybody to have like a big tower, you know. But back then, it was also not uh, possible to, <laughs> to build like an extremely powerful PC in such a tiny package. Yeah. Right now, you can, you can get quite a fast PC in a very small form factor. Of course, at a certain point, you will run into limitations if you want to go even smaller. Like, for example, a 3090 uh, graphics card would not fit in my 7-liter mini ITX case. Um, but yeah, up to like 3060 Ti, no problem at all. Um, okay, that one's installed. Um, now, I'm going to um, connect the cables and also pre-route some cables because as you can see I have a lot of cables right here now um, because right now the graphics card is not in there yet uh, um, liquid cooler is not in there yet so now it's still quite easy to to reach most places so always first get rid of the most difficult cables usually the, the bigger ones so 24 pin ATX power connector By the way, guys, I know I'm not doing extremely proper cable management today, but that, of course, has to do with the time. Um, so I'm not going to use tie wraps and properly fix everything on this side of the build. I will make the front somewhat pretty, the back not so much, because that just takes too much time for today's stream. Then we have our two 8 pins for the CPU. Miha Mihailo Alexic on YouTube saying, if I try building a PC, I will connect the wires wrong and turn the PC into a smoke machine. <laughs> well, I, I get I get the worry, but luckily for you, <coughs> when that happens, when you connect the wires wrong, pretty much 
all that will happen is pretty much nothing. Usually it doesn't even fit. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> but yeah, if you, you still push through, that, then you can, of course, break stuff. Um, but yeah, I think stuff is like, especially with these components, everything is properly labeled. So just read what's on there and you should be good. So these are my uh, six plus two pin VGA power cables and I will already pre-route them. So I can eas easily access them later on. So I already take them to the front of the case. Um, Hugh, do you yes. also have the price for the case? Oh, I'm not 100% sure yet, but it should be very close to the existing black one. So best to check that one because it also differs a bit per region what the price is. Uh, so if you check the price for the black one, it should not be too far off because that one is quite properly available nowadays. I'm also going to connect um, the front USB. So this connector is for the two type A ports on the front. And then you have uh, this connector for the front type C. So that's a special header. Um, also make sure that if you're getting a case that has this kind of header, uh, and if you want to use the Type-C, of course, that you also get a motherboard that offers this header, because not all motherboards do at this point. There we go. Later on, I will show you all the cables in the front and go. And then we'll go quickly go through what I plugged in on the front because now it's a little bit hard to show all of it. This is our uh, front audio connector. So it also says HD audio. And that connector is actually on the bottom uh, left of the motherboard. So I'm going to pull this up above the power supply. And there we go. And this is um, the connector for our fan in the rear of the case. I will also plug that in on the bottom of the motherboard where we have a nice fan header for that one. And there we go. I'm not going to plug the RGB uh, directly into the motherboard because for that one we have the nice addressable RGB hub. So I'm going to plug this one on there and later on I just connect the hub to the motherboard and I directly connect all the addressable RGB in the case to the motherboard at once. Um, let me see. Mihailo is asking MSI Mac or Aventus cards. They are not too different from each other apart from Mac is AMD and Aventus is Nvidia. But in terms of cooling, they are relatively similar. Not identical, but relatively similar. Here we also have another uh, ARGB cable. So let me see if we can already properly reach the hub. There we go. Um, and then, and this is a very important one. Let's see where my connectors are. Because of course we need to be able to switch um, the computer on and off. Um, so for that you have your power SW and then you have your reset SW for your reset. And of course the power LED. Um, that one is in the bottom right of this motherboard. And always check your manual to see how you should connect that uh, to your motherboard. If you accidentally, for example, switch the power and the reset button, don't worry, but you will just switch it on with the reset button and you will reset it with the power button. There we go. 
and the power LED. Um, then I will also um, connect the addressable RGB hub on the back of the case to the motherboard. And that one we will of course use to sync all the RGB um, lights later on directly to the motherboard. Because on the motherboard we have two J Rainbow headers, so those are the addressable RGB headers. Um, but we have way more uh, addressable RGB devices, so we have several fans. We have, um, of course, the liquid cooler with two ARGB fans, ARGB on the uh, CPU block as well. Um, so too much RGB for just two headers. And you can link them all to each other, but this way you can just connect them to the hub. And by using this hub, you can also use the effects with the Insta Light loop button on the front. Uh, so the J Rainbow is in the bottom left. So that one is going here. Also, when you finish your build, always check if your um, RGB connectors are still properly in there because they're relatively fragile connectors. I don't think they're very good, but yeah, it's basically the standard nowadays. These, So we cannot really avoid it because otherwise our motherboards would not be compatible and our cases with other uh, brands. So we're using them, but I'm personally not a big fan of the three pin, um, but also the four pin RGB connectors. Okay, uh, let me grab my phone quickly so I will show you what we have connected. So let's start on top. So here we have our two uh, 8 pin power connectors. Here we have our 24 pin power connector. These we already brought to the front and we will later use this of course to power the graphics card when we put it in. Um, but now we can easily access it here when we put it in later. Then we have two cables for the front USB. This is the type A one, this is the type C one. So this will feed both type A uh, ports and that the single type C. In the bottom we have the HD audio for the front audio jacks. We have the um, addressable RGB header for um, on the J Rainbow. That one is for the addressable RGB hub on the back of the motherboard tray. We have our rear case fan that is located right there. And right here we have the, um, the buttons like the, the power button, the reset button, um, and also the power LED. And there we go. Um, and then the next thing I will do is um, connect the fence on the front. And actually, maybe you can see it in the close up cam. Um, I'm using a 3 uh, to 1 PWM cable for the fence, so I only need a single uh, PWM header to power all the three fans on the front. Uh, of course, you can also directly connect them to the motherboard. I believe this motherboard would have um, enough connectors for that. Um, but this way, it's just slightly easier because you only need a single PWM header. If I can find where I have it. Ah, should be somewhere here. There it is. And that one I also connect to one of the fan headers on this motherboard. So I actually have three right next to each other here, but I only use a single one uh, now. So yeah, you would have enough. Um, then we are going to um, install the liquid cooler. And that is uh, a bit of a tricky part. And that, for example, has to do with that you need quite a lot of cables for all the addressable RGB, as well as to power the fence, for example. Um, remove the dust cover, because you will need to screw uh, it in the top in this situation. And I'm going to position it like this. So it will be like this in the case, and then of course the block will be installed on the CPU. First, I'm going to um, put all the cables to the right side. So you don't want to have them come out the front, of course, because those will be visible from the tempered glass window. So you want to put them to the back as much as possible. So even, for example, uh, for the, uh, the pump, you also have a header. You can route it out the front or you can route it out the back. So you can choose. I'm going for the back, of course. So you won't see as much of it. And then I already put this through in the top. There we go. And I will also plug this in directly because the pump header is on the top of the motherboard. And if I don't plug this in now, it will be harder to reach. 
So let me turn the case a little bit because I cannot see what I'm doing right now. There we go. And for the pump, you have a dedicated header uh, on your motherboard. It's called Pump Fan 1. There we go. Then I will put all the cables to the motherboard tray. There we go. So this is for one fan. We have two cables, one for the addressable RGB and one to just spin the fan, basically. The more effort you, you put in properly routing your cables before you put every, anything, anything in, the easier your life will become eventually. So that is one of the fans. So let me plug that in on the motherboard already so we cannot lose it. There we go. And then we have the second fan. Oh, I see Renato is saying, why can't I join the giveaway? It's unavailable to Brazil, uh, Brazilian users. Yes, unfortunately, because of the, uh, the law in Brazil, we cannot run our giveaway there because I think they consider it to be gambling. So unfortunately, we're not allowed to run our giveaway in, for example, Brazil. And I believe Italy has also has a rule that we cannot run it there. So unfortunately, we, yeah. we would want to run it there, but we're not allowed to. Very sad. Yeah. Sorry about that, but but we have to follow the rules. Okay, there we go. And then I will also directly connect the other fan before I'm going to screw in the radiator because now I can still access it properly. And then it's time to screw this bad boy in. There we go. Uh, so always just line this up with um, the holes in the top of your case. And then it's relatively easy to install. Later on, I will show you with my close-up cam, so you get a better view of what I'm doing right now. As the Rockman says, it's, it's not gambling. No, I agree, but yeah, um, in certain countries, they yeah. do classify mm -hmm. it as being gambling. So there's not too much we can do about that, unfortunately. I'm quickly going to switch my hands because I'm right-handed and I'm not very good at operating a screwdriver with my left hand. Magnetic screw head. There we go. As soon as you have two screws in, you can just leave it basically and then it becomes a lot easier to, to screw in the rest. Um, I'm deep. The gamers asking, does MSI have any building PC tutorials on their channel? Yeah, we actually do. So if you take a look on our channel, I think they're somewhat older, but they still mostly the same for, for today's computers. But yes, we do have some. How many screws do you have left, Michiel? Um, in total? Like at the top? Uh, three. Three. Okay, guys, let's quickly draw a second winner. Well, <laughs> Michiel finishes the lap. Three screws. And uh, it seems like the second winner for today's Rainbow Six uh, Extraction Game Code is Thomas BM07. So 
Thomas. Congratulations, Thomas. Oh seven. Congratulations with Rainbow Six Extraction game code. This one is asking, how do we join a giveaway? Go to msi.com slash two slash insider, or if you're watching YouTube or Twitch like you are, then you can also follow the direct link to uh, Gleam that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. And uh, mm -hmm. that will redirect you to Gleam. Within Gleam, you can perform certain actions. The more you perform, the bigger chance you will also have to win. Yeah. So uh, in the coming days, guys, uh, we will send you an email. And in that email, we'll also explain how you can redeem the code. So you have all the necessary information in the email that we will send you in the coming days if you have won the code. All right. We have there we go. a few more to come. So uh, you know, there's still a chance for many of you guys to win a code. So this part is also installed. Let me quickly grab my camera so you can see what it looks like right now. So now it's installed in the top of the case. So that's where you see the connectors and that's why I wanted to connect them first because right now with the radiator in front it's harder to reach them. A way to avoid this is of course to get a, an even bigger case like a Sakura 500 series. They still have it easily accessible right there. Um, but in order to keep it relatively compact to not make the case too big and this one slightly overlaps right here. But if you connect them beforehand, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So next step will be, of course, installing the CPU block on the CPU. So I'm going to put this case in down quickly. And I will first put the addressable RGB cable through the hole on the back, because later it will be hard to access that. There we go. No, I just you need some help. <laughs> no, all good. Um, I will install it like this, so I can just turn the dragon in the right direction. And this is the addressable RGB cable. I will route that through the top. Let me see right there. And I accidentally took my cable to the front again. And there we go. Okay, what I will do next is apply the thermal paste. So I will show you how I do that for this one. Um, basically, what I will do is I will put a drop in the middle of the CPU. If you use a very big CPU, like for example AMD Threadripper, a single drop may not be sufficient. So for those very big high-end desktop platform CPUs, I would suggest um, putting a drop in different positions or to spread it. Um, for relatively smaller CPUs, like you have in a mainstream segment, if you have a proper drop in the middle, you should be okay. So now I need both hands again. So quickly putting you down. And then before I put it on, I will show you again what it looks like. There we go. So here we have a drop of thermal paste on the middle of the CPU and then we will use the pressure of the um, CPU block mount to spread the thermal paste over the CPU. So as you can see guys, you don't need that much to uh, you know, have the spread <laughs> over the CPU, so don't Trips overdo says, it. says, I empty the entire bottle of thermal paste <laughs> like <laughs> I'm making a cake. Uh, it works in terms of cooling, it shouldn't make too much of a difference, um, but the problem is once you remove your cooler, Everything is covered in thermal paste, including all the sides of your CPU, and it becomes a huge hassle uh, to clean it, and it will not help you with cooling either. So I, I wouldn't suggest going for very large amounts. <laughs> oh, Tripson says, I'm kidding. Good, good. <laughs> but I know some people who do. I have seen people who really do use a lot of thermal paste. Then time to install the block.
and that is super easy. Just align it with the mount, push it down, and then you got these nice thumb screws that you screw in each corner. I personally first always just do it by hand and later on I will tighten them with a screwdriver one by one. Um, here, uh, Renato is asking, do all of our all, uh, water cooling uh, have LGA 700 ready? No. Uh, some of our older models, uh, for example, the V1 version of the, um, the 240 R, the 360R, so the older models um, do not come um, with a mount out of the box. Also, the K240, K360, the V1 models also do not come with a mount out of the box. Um, but the newer models, like the, um, the P-series, the C-series, the RV2 series, the KV2 series, um, MEG series, they all come with um, LGA 1700. So this one, for example, is R-series V2. And that one um, does come with the mount out of the box. Now I tighten them with my screwdriver. There we go, nice and tight. So let me quickly show you with close up. So you just tighten them in all four corners. And it's installed. And now that is the RGB cable. I will connect that in the back. Um, David James says, is that the difference between the V1 and V2 versions? Uh, some of our earlier batches of the V1 version also had some issues. That's why we currently are running an exchange program for that one. Um, but in terms of functionality, yes, the uh, LGA 1700 is uh, indeed the only difference. So it's not like there is a significant difference in cooling performance or anything. Or that you will get different features or that they look different. Or now I will um, connect the addressable RGB cables in the back. So I connect, uh, later on I will show you properly, but now if I turn around then I cannot see anymore what I'm doing. There we go. And was that the last one? I think it should be. Okay, we got the one in the back. One, two, three in the front. Two in the radiator and one interlinked. Okay, that should be all. Let me show you up close. This may be a little bit harder. So this is the addressable RGB hub. So here you see all the connectors attached to it. So I can easily control everything through a single J Rainbow header on the motherboard. And now I actually think I am done on that side. Um, the only thing I still need to uh, put in, of course, is the graphics card. But before I do that, let's remove the brackets right here. Okay. 
So this specific graphics card is dual bracket. So I'm going to remove two of them. That was the second one, as you could hear. I'm going to turn this a little bit, because it's hard otherwise to put in the graphics card. Let me help me heal. Hmm? Let me help. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Achilles, I am doing really good. Thank you for asking. But uh, I'll be doing better if we uh, start playing, you know, Rainbow Six Extraction in a second. Oh, we will. As you can see, this is, it exactly fits. <laughs> it's a big graphics card, stretches through all of the case, but it does fit. And this is the, the biggest one in our lineup, the Supreme X. So the only thing I now need to do is, of course, um, put these two power connectors in the side of the GPU. So let me quickly turn around so I can reach it. Pendanora's asking, where is the white cat that comes along with the giveaway? That one just ran away. <laughs> Unfortunately, because cats are great. Do we have many cat owners in the chat? Yes, guys, I know on the back it doesn't look very good, but I don't have time to do cable management because we also still want to play some games. So I'm just uh, going to close it on the back and just pretend like there's nothing there. Because if it closed, it doesn't exist, right? If we can, of course, cram the cables in. I think with a little bit of force we can. Turn this a little bit. There we go. My thumb screws. And now I'm not going to tell Eric anything and if he opens his case up on the back. <laughs> It will pop off because <laughs> it's um, under pressure. <laughs> we, we can definitely take care of that. <laughs> and that was saying, "Well, big GPU, haha." Well, the supreme it is a big GPU. Supreme ain't no joke. <laughs> we can also put on the du magnetic dust filter on top again. And before I'm going to close it on this side, let's see if it actually works. So that's also quite helpful if it does. Before I close everything. So we have HDMI for a capture, display port for a monitor. There we go. No cables inside the fence. No, should all be good. We go. Okay, guys, moment of truth. <sighs> no explosion. Nice. <laughs> no smoke. <laughs> so, guys, seems like Michiel does know what he's doing. Sometimes I do. Not with everything, but with computers usually. But it still needs to uh, boot. I hope look it at does. it. <laughs> guys, Emil says, will it boot? Well, seems like it does. I can see some stuff on my screen happening. So I think I can safely close this one. There we go. Now, guys, press F if that's need. So 
So, like you can see, if you never built a PC before, it doesn't take that long. It's not extremely hard. I'm sure you guys can do it as well. There we go. Going to move this a little bit to the side so I can still see the chat. So what do you think of the end result? Maybe we should give a little bit of a tour. We have some issues oh. with the camera again. And disconnected from the network again. Let me quickly check. Uh, oh, you should be able to reach me. I'm on the right network. Maybe you need to reconnect. Hmm. Well, the computer is working, but my wireless camera. Uh, I will reboot the app. Yeah, good one. I will also reboot here. <coughs> Let me reboot a PC. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> no, still not working. Come on, come on. Come on, I want to show my fancy white PC. Just work along, droid guy. Oh, it's, uh, it's working now. Ah, it's working, nice. There we go. So we got our MPG Z 694s motherboard with the Core i9 12900K. We've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600. Our MAG Core Liquid um, 240R V2 white. And you get the nice addressable RGB fans that come with the MPG Gangner 110R white. Another one in the back. We have our RTX 3070 Ti Supreme and uh, hidden behind that cooler we have a 2 terabyte uh, Spatium M2, uh, M480 SSD. Misfit is asking, no white GPU was available? No, we don't have one at this point because we're just starting off um, with white components but maybe in the future. I cannot promise you anything but never say never. So do you guys like it? <laughs> guys, Emil says, needs more RGB. <laughs> With the LED button, so I can now control through, I can cycle through the different effects. Or when I press it down and hold it, you will see it flash and it will sync up um, with the motherboard. So in this situation, it's a rainbow effect. Hansel Organa says, I kind of like the black GPU, it pops. Yeah, I don't think it looks too bad. I also kind of like it, actually. And from the side of this GPU, you mostly see the cooling fins anyway. Um, oh, Max 6 is asking, is there no Gleam this week? There is, actually. Yeah, but it seems like there's some issue on uh, Twitch. The bot oh. is not posting the... Uh, Oh, and then I go to msi.com <coughs> slash two slash insider. Yeah, maybe you can also separately drop the link in the chat. Mm, yeah, 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 I can. Just gotta go to Twitch. I checked from the back end and everything seems to be correct. So guys, out of 10, what do you think? Ignoring the back of the motherboard tray, of course, because I didn't do any cable management. But the front? <laughs> And let me also boot up Afterburner so you can see my temperatures and frame rates while playing. A nine and a half, seven, nine, eight. Okay, that's better than my grades in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Solid eight. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Gigaram says 10. Thanks, Gigaram. You're score scoring points here as well. <laughs> Eric says, you did a good job, but not a big fan of white. That's of course fine as well. That's why we also have everything in black. But yeah, it's of course a subjective thing. So some people love the white, uh, some people don't like it at all. We're very much aware of that. Uh, Jared Pena says, 10 if you had the godlike. Unfortunately, the godlike doesn't fit inside this case. Oh, Repo Man gives me a one. 
Do you want me to start crying on stream? At 1k, 8. <laughs> One Darkman, 9.5. Renato, 11. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, decent grades. I'm happy with that. So, ja, are yes. you ready for some gaming? I have been ready for an hour and a half. <laughs> 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 All right, no, then no, 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 uh, let's see how this white little monster is going to perform. At least it boots up my game, so that's something. Yep, so, uh, still no smoke. As you can <laughs> see, it's sitting right next to me here. <laughs> Maybe it's white smoke and you just don't see it. <laughs> I will grab my headset. Uh, Schnips is asking, will the white case be available with a mesh front panel? Uh, no plans at this point, but who knows? Maybe in the future. Rough Stealthy says, 10 years ago, white components and cases were very rare. 10 That's years ago, they were. But when you go like 25, 30 years ago, well, if it was white, it's more like yellowish. <laughs> Grayish almost. But something so strange, so. Oh, I heard some sounds from my Let's get this. Michiel is saying Mike and Josh should do a speed build live. Yeah, we can do that sometime. Speed build? Like competition, who's fastest? Actually, I think that's actually a pretty good idea. It sounds <coughs> good. But, I'm uh, confident. guys, uh, <laughs> Michiel has like years more experience, so he's probably going to be faster, but hey. You can always every, try. Everybody likes an underdog, right? Exactly. <laughs> and we can have like a system that cable management becomes a factor. Like you can get some extra points if you, you build it prettier. <laughs> People are talking about the 2K FPS. Yeah, let's hope it's the same in the game. Then I'm a happy person. Okay. <laughs> David yeah. says, whoa, fast Windows install. Yeah, I kind of cheated and pre-installed Windows on that SSD. I didn't want to bother you with a Windows installation. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise, you know, we'll be sitting here in three hours and uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Installing Windows is necessarily the most interesting thing to watch. So yeah, I cheated with that one. I prepared it for you guys. Okay, uh, let me set up the chat. Let me yes. invite you. Invite the squad. Yeah, it's true that the, the newer Windows uh, versions indeed do install a lot faster than the older ones. But still, it's, it's boring to watch. Okay, uh, let me join. <laughs> Gigaram says, last to finish the speed build <laughs> gives me a 3090. <laughs> you wish, Gigaram. <laughs> Okay, so we have a lobby. Um, are we just going to do joint matchmaking? Sure. Let's see where we end up. Panonora says, I actually haven't seen any gameplay of the standalone game. Should be interesting. That's kind of fun. I shortly played it before in a live stream. It's a nice uh, game if you, for example, like co-op and stuff. And of course, you can win it today. Well, Asrex still has an old full tower case from uh, from the nineties. Ooh, you know, those you used should, to be white, but like over <laughs> over the years, I don't think it's that white anymore. But. <laughs> Yeah, I remember those days where uh, you know full towers was really you know the shit you know that you had to show your friends like you know look at how you know, that was back in the days was like almost like the the benchmark when do yourself market became big and then you know the bigger your do yourself case was like the more it was I, like, I never understood this because especially back in those days like internet was so bad that LAN parties were even more a thing because over the internet you could not properly game against each other or with each other. 
So LAN parties were like a big deal of <laughs> in gaming. And I, I, I didn't want to drag around like a huge, heavy, big tower case. So I personally always went with the, well, for back in the day, the smaller and lighter ones. And nowadays I just carry my PC in a small camera bag, actually. I think you uh, dropped off the game search. I did? Oh no, I have to select something. Right. Let's just Don't go have for that many one. choices. <laughs> um, do we want to play, play private or just join matchmaking? Maybe some, some random can carry us. <laughs> sounds that like sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Good morning, TY Digital. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> you could always flex with your GTS 450 GPU. Back in the day, you could. Those would also overclock really well. I remember those. I actually put one on the dry ice once. So, what do we have here? Ooh. Liberty Island. Threat Sounds level moderate. I think we should be able to handle that. GigaRam says, me and a friend used to run LAN parties. Why not anymore? I still visit LAN parties, actually. Well, with COVID, there were fewer, of course. But uh, I actually subscribed last week again for a LAN party. So I, I think I still go like four or five times a year to a LAN party. Still love it. Rothy, Sothi says, um, UT 2K era, 2K3, 2K4. When I started LAN parties, it was uh, our tournament 99 mostly. Quake 3 Arena. Uh, oh, I have to select. Oh. Sledge looks good. He has a shotgun. Okay, Rams has added 21 inch CRT monitor to carry it around. That thing was heavy, yeah, I remember those. At a, at a certain point, I had like a 23 inch, but I didn't take that one to LAN parties. I had a smaller, I believe, 17 inch to take to LAN parties, which was still very heavy, but a lot lighter than a 23 inch. Here is, there's not many LAN parties in the UK anymore. No, not so, not that many in the Netherlands here either, but still, if you search for them, you can still find some. Let me put my sensitivity a bit. Better. <laughs> so this is our random that will carry us. Yep, I'm communicating with them. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> Okay, let's kill some zombies. Let's get going. Reloading, cover me. I think we also need to destroy those blobs on the walls, right? Trek says, I remember those 21 inch CRTs. They took up so much space. They sure did. And I actually ran multi monitor back then as well. <laughs> I had a huge That's desk right. in my room. It filled up like more than half of my room, that desk. Gary says, I'm a tournament at Quake 3 Arena. Those were the days. They were. I still love those games. Some of the best games ever made, I think. The arena shooters from the late 90s. I gotta find myself some health. Parker says you need to melee that dude. Let me see. Oh, that's okay. V is melee. I still have to find out how to melee. V. V. Right. Nice. Med kit. I need med kit. Arian says he was using gamer's language to communicate with a random guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was for sure. Yeah, man, you know how it goes. It's universal. <laughs> so we should defend this or what should we do here? 
locate and take down the targets. So I think we need to search for them. Yeah, we need to uh, look up the entire map and uh, find the targets. When you're there, you'll know. Mm, not sure if it's here. Uh, been here. I think this is where we started. Right there. Take it down. We have not alerted. Found one. Oh, a random just nearly him. He cut his throat. I hope we don't have that many young viewers right now because that was brutal. <laughs> I think we pretty much almost opened all the doors. Oh, there's Watch out there. for the zombie guy. Oh, there's not a zombie here. That hurt. You guys need help? A little bit. Oh! Got your bag. Got your bag. Nice, thanks. Okay, still alive. What the hell? Where'd he come from? Stay alive, man. Stay alive. Okay, I'll stay closer to you. Yeah, we gotta find some uh, health package. So, how's the PC running? Ah, Pagamia says you don't want to kill the biopsy guys with bullets, only melee. Okay, so that's why it had the, the blue sign on them when I aim on them, I think. I think it should be those ones. Okay, we're good. Hmm. Oh. Enemy. Need to find some health. Sneak and stab is the best tactic. Okay. Wait, Usually they already you see me before I this? see them. You can sneak in this game? Apparently. How can I take this? I believe he already has full capacity. Oh, oh got see. him. Nice. I like that melee attack kind of animation. That <laughs> looks cool. We have to go there? Cafe. Do we have some hills? Yeah, that would be nice. Hmm. I think you have to request it as well. How do I do that? Oh, on this thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Nice. Oh, we have it. Oh, sorry. Oh, I think the heels were but at the suitcase item. Okay. RC says, I missed the old days when uh, motherboard Arctic series were still available. Yeah, I also really like the look of the, the Arctic boards, but at a certain point it was harder to get a uh, signal quality that was good enough uh, for, for example, PXR Express Gen 4, uh, DDR5. We couldn't get a signal quality that was as good as with the black PCB. So that's why you haven't been seeing um, that many white and silver PCBs from us lately. Because at a certain point it starts to hurt the frequency that you for, can, for example, reach with your memory. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. But maybe in the future those white and silver PCBs will also get better. But at this point, it's it's hard to to support all those those new PCI Express and DDR standards. Well, this really reminds me of Black Ops Zombie, Call of Duty. <laughs> Except you don't need money to open need doors. To open this? Oh, 
Oh, Teammate down. Oh, that's not enemy. Okay. Our uh, buddy is picking you up. Nice. Next down, and uh, I'm KO. Wow. What is this? It's scary. A lot of infestation. Cat Love Rule 29 says My dad has a ton of older things. We have a giant record playing. We have older monitors. I know about them. Scary enough. Oh, something's oh. killing me in the meanwhile. Okay. Still alive. Um, Scary enough, he unknowingly, till recent years, realized he named my siblings and I after PC parts. Okay, now I'm curious about your name. <laughs> oh. Well, Phil, what is this? Oh, he shot me! Why, why can I break this? Since when can zombies shoot? Thank you, thank you. Oh, stay alive. Oh, that guy yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You need to Man. shoot the shiny things on the roots. Okay, okay. Let me see. Uh, it's so annoying when you're like low HP and you can't I think this? run. It's completely shiny. This. Hmm. I'm not sure if we're shooting the right thing. I think we can. Oh, we failed. Oh. Whoa, big guy here. You need to move to the next suitcase objective. Yeah, yeah the mission failed. We're not very good at this game. <laughs> oh. Can I also pick up heals somewhere here? Hmm. Really? There's no health anywhere. What were you shooting at? <laughs> I was. Uh, I just love the sound of the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Pagamia says, sorry, should I not give the streamer some pointers? No, that's fine. We're totally okay with back seating. No worries. Yeah, man, we got this. When you sometimes kill a zombie, you get that, that red kind of thing around. Oh! Oh, he got me. He bit me. Am I down immediately? I died. Really? Yeah. Don't kill I need it. I <laughs> Sometimes oh. I'm reading chat too much and I just get attacked. <laughs> I think I just turned into a uh, zombie or something. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Come on, random guy, carry us. You can do it. We believe. Oh, he should have meleeed him, right? I think that was one of those guys that he needed to melee attack. Uh, 
Mihil says, Mike, what you do? What you guys do to Eva set showcase life? Yes, we will. Pakala is saying this is like a more of a sneak around type of game. Well, I think we're way to ramble for that. Yeah. We just jump in and shoot. <laughs> <coughs> you know, we shoot first and then uh, ask questions later. The red the kind of thing is them screaming and making everything around them awake. Ah, okay, okay. So that's it. Hmm. Our teammate has left. Shall we do one more? Yeah. We can Let's try. do another giveaway in between. <clears throat> I'm always in for a giveaway. So, who is going to be today's third winner? So, the third winner for today is Rashad. Congratulations. Rashad. You also won a game code for Rainbow Six Extraction. Hope you enjoy the game. And in the coming days, you will receive an email with the code and the instructions how to redeem. So, congrats. Okay, so let's do another game and then pick our final winner for today. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Okay, what do we do now? Um, oh, my character is down, so I need to pick a new character. Okay, okay. Um, okay, let's start another game, join matchmaking, and then I can pick another guy, I think. <laughs> he says, play a game with a white force GC30 controller. I do well have one right here. It's a white set after all. But like, I'm extremely bad with shooters and a controller. So. <laughs> Because I'm already struggling with keyboard and mouse, for now I, I will stick to keyboard and mouse. But maybe some Rocket League or something in the future, that I can do with a, with a controller. Let's see what this round has So this is for us. the easiest level, I think. Threat level moderate, it's only one bar out of four. So we're, we're dying to the easiest guys? Is that what's happening here? I guess. Uh, <laughs> Gaius on Twitch is saying, you need to rescue that MIA. So uh, I guess we can rescue some MIAs, like uh, the guys that just died, like including us. Okay. <laughs> but uh, at this point, you can tell us anything and pretty much just make us believe. <laughs> Speed on. Yeah, okay. This one looks pretty badass. Which one do you have? The one with the mask. The one with the mask, okay. Um, I'm going for Sophia. She looks quite badass as well. Ooh, that looks like a hefty gun. First mission is to kill the elite target. Second mission is to rescue your down teammate from previous game. Okay. Elite targets. Okay. So the elite target is like a monster or something, I guess. Oh, I don't have to reload this every time. I see. There's a lot of bullets. this up. Oh. oh, reloading takes a lot of time. Okay. 
busy here. Oh, I should attack him like that, right? No, this one I think. Oh, nice! Ooh, you executed him. I like that attack. Oh, he hit me. That hurt. Let's move on. Okay, um, the Vavrata says, Game seems to be great. What's the name of the game? This is Rainbow Six Extraction. You can actually win that one today. So make sure to join the giveaway. Oh, Valyamir says this one was kill elite, so any which way. Okay. So pretty much anything that moves, just, just shoot. We need to rescue the down teammate from the previous game. Nothing left to here. But, but how do we do that? Mission now done, so move to suitcase. <laughs> nice one. Okay, move on. Oh, there is, I think, is that suitcase? 53 meters? It's not like we're getting on the radar, you know, where we dive okay. frequently. We need a location. There is something here. Creepy. It's moving. Oh, I didn't know we can do this. I think we have to go here. I'm not sure. This is really satisfying. If only cleaning up was uh, was this easy. Oh, you can actually remove that. I didn't know. Oh, run! I think we have to stay in here. One more person needs to uh, do this. Did you request? Uh, I think our buddy did. Locate Maya operator. Uh, am I, oh, okay, okay, I see. Now we're gonna go and find where we died in the last game. Oh. I just noticed that these black uh, swarms, uh, swamps, they uh, slow you down. So if you can shoot yeah, it, they do, they do. it goes away. Oh, here I can rescue one. How do I break this out? Holy shit. Whoa. How is that thing allowed to shoot so often? Let me take you off. There we go. How do I pull this out? Do I need someone else to help? Or? I'm not sure. Oh, 
Oh, Stay alive. Uh -huh. Ah, I'm being shot. We're very good at this game. Oh, one person needs to pull while the two others need to shoot the shiny things coming down the roots. Okay. Oh. We failed. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, no, I'm carrying you. <laughs> Why should I carry you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then I, think I just you need drop to carry you again. To the helicopter. <laughs> helicopter. To the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. On okay. your left. On your left. Okay, let me pick you up again. I already dropped you. Luckily, it's not too far. Oh, in, in, the, in here. There's a, there's a cabin. You need to put me in the cabin. The cabin? Yeah, the shiny cabin right there. This one? Yeah. I think that's going to revive me. Oh, yeah, okay. Our body is putting you in now. Okay, nice, nice. That looks pretty gross. Oh, I need to be there, I think. Okay. Carry back to the helicopter. Yeah, Extraction I think successful! Yeah, Who would have it. thought? Well, well, well. Ross Softy says, been a while since I last played the Rainbow Six game, Nintendo 64. Yeah, that's been a while. <laughs> but these creatures make me want to play now. It's a pretty cool game. We survived this time. Yep. <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was a success. So, with a good, with a good. Okay, Ja, I think it's time to pick our last winner for today. Uh, let's go for it. So let's see who is today's last and final winner for Rainbow Six Extraction, the game that we have just played. Yes. Moment and of truth. It seems like the last winner is... Piceus, or Piceus. Piceus Congratulations. I think. You also won a game code for Rainbow Six Extraction. Yeah, man, congrats. So you are today's uh, final winner, and uh, yeah, well, in the coming days, guys, you will receive an email, all of today's winners, and uh, yeah, congratulations to all of you. So, next week, we cannot tell too much about it yet, but you will see <laughs> our new A1000G power supply, and we're going to power a GPU with it. And that's all I'm going to say about yeah. it. Yeah, you will have to tune in to see what kind of surprise we have, uh, you know, lined up for you. I'm sure it's going to be as beautiful as today. I'm sure it will be. I hope you enjoyed today. Thank yeah. you all for joining. Hope and um, a lot. <laughs> I hope to see you again next week. Same place, same time. Thank Stay you so safe, much. guys. <laughs> and have a good day. Goodbye. Bye.